I was reading in Thessalonians and looking at how Paul conducted himself and what he said about the, his entrance into the church there through the speaking of the word. He said here in verse 2, um, you know, he'd been s s shamefully treated and s suffered uh, in Philippi. And then he said, we were bold in our God to speak to you the gospel of God with much contention. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. Even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God which tries our hearts. For neither at any time did we use flattering words, as you know, or a cloak of covetousness, God is witness. <laughs> nor did we seek glory of men, neither of you, nor yet of others, that we could have been burdensome as apostles of Christ, and we were gentle among you. It keeps going on, but uh, what I noticed here, well, a few things. First of all, they had to be bold to speak in the midst of much contention and with much contention. You know, in Thessalonica, there were a lot of uh, old guard religionists, meaning the Jews at that time, who opposed this new thing that was happening. And for that reason, Paul had to be quite strong in his proclamation. And that can come across like uh, pride or something like that, you know. But... Um, Especially when you're doing it with much contention, that means you're arguing on every side. It's not just, oh, Jesus loves you, you know, God's got a plan for your life, or something like that. No, this was a bold declaration of truth while contending and ex uh, with and exposing error on every side from real enemies of the gospel. Uh, and he says, our exhortation was not of deceit or uncleanness or in guile, but we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. How do you know if you've been allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel? Well, you have to be able to speak the truth. Uh, it's not a small thing to speak the word of God in a way that actually delivers people from various forms of error and uh, actually brings people out of bondage. That's not something that you can do by yourself. You have to be uh, standing in the Lord and not trusting in yourself. This is not about a display of human wisdom or eloquence. It's something deeper than that um, that comes out of the being of someone whose focus is and, and loyalty is on the word and the word is first and foremost and they're willing to pay a price because of the word and they're not going to water it down and they're not going to compromise it to please people which is why he said we didn't use first of all um we we speak not as pleasing men but god which tries our hearts you know to speak, it's one thing to speak about the Bible. It's another thing to be conscious that you are handling God's word and be in fear and trembling before God uh, as you search the word until you find the truth that agrees with your conscience and testifies of Christ. Um, you know, I was reading this uh, book, um, just the other day, I better not say the name, but uh, by Sam Patterson, Samson Patterson, I think is his name. But he was talking about how, you know, speaking the word, one of the reasons why there's so many people in um, churches that are just in this lukewarm state and there's no bold proclamation of the truth is because people have secret, hidden shameful things that's insulated them from the Lord that they're not dealing with. They're not walking in the light and they know it. That takes away your confidence to be able to stand up and contend for the gospel. Uh, because when the enemy comes and attacks you, he accuses you uh, in your conscience, in the area of conscience, slander, accusation, right? 
And if your conscience registers with any of that and it's not dealt with, you collapse under that. And I know from experience because there's been times in my Christian life when I could not boldly contend for truth because inwardly I was condemned. Um, now, that didn't mean that there was judicial condemnation around me from God, but I was not up to date with the Lord. I wasn't boldly standing in the gospel in my conscience. My conscience did not have rest, and therefore I could not speak boldly. Um, whereas here, he says, we were entrusted with the gospel by God himself who allowed us. You got to see that when we're able to contend for the truth with a good conscience, um, it's because God is actually allowing it. There's been times, there are times when you just cannot speak boldly because inwardly you are not confidently standing before the Lord. Um, and we don't speak as pleasing men. So men pleasing is huge today. Everybody's afraid to piss people off and offend. Uh, and for that reason, people back down and say, well, that's a secondary issue. I don't feel like touching that. I'm not going to deal with that, especially if they want to stay friends. No, God needs people who say, I don't care about having friends. I don't care about my reputation. I don't care about the accusation. I don't care about the slandering. I don't care about what people say about me. I'm not here to please men. If I was, I would not be a servant of God. I'm here to speak the word of God. And this is why Paul always asked people to pray for him that he would have utterance to speak the mystery of Christ. Because it takes a supernatural strengthening from within to not collapse under uh, the desire to please people. You know, you, I mean... The, there are so many topics to contend with and so many groups of people caught up in those things that all have to be exposed. And every time you expose one of these things and bring someone into rest, you've pissed off 30 other people. Uh, but it's worth it. Um, anyway, he says, as uh, God tries our hearts. And he says, for neither at any time did we use flattering words. You know, we live in a culture that leads with flattering words where we say hey man you're doing awesome great job you know uh, whether they are or not people people say you know i'm gonna do this stupid thing you know and there's like oh good job man great stuff even though inwardly they're thinking uh oh you know no uh we can't be like that if we're going to speak the word of god uh flattering words he says, uh, we didn't use them at any time, as you know. In other words, these people knew Paul and knew that he was not a flatterer. And some people don't like it. You're not a flatterer. You don't uh, hold it back, you know. You don't soften it. You don't change it. You don't adulterate it. You speak the word. Um, it's a two-edged sword, and and we don't always land on the right side of that two-edged sword, but it's there to heal us and to divide out error if we will submit to it. But if we rebel against that word, it cuts us down. And when it cuts us down, if we don't repent, then we harden ourselves in the flesh, and then we just become a tool of the enemy until we do repent. So you want to be on the right side of that sword. Uh, he says, we didn't seek glory of men. Um, neither from you nor others. We, they could have been burdensome, you know. But he said, we were gentle. Uh, so being affectionately desired of you, we were willing to have imparted to you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because they were dear, you were dear to us. For remember, brethren, our labor and travail laboring night and day because we would not be chargeable to any of you. We preach unto, the, unto you the gospel of God. Um, it's on my conscience to speak the way I speak uh, when I see something that is in 
uh, that, that people are dealing with that's adulterating their heart and dividing their heart and taking them away from Christ as their first love and onto other things. And so I speak to it and I warn and I contend and I don't do it with flattery and I'm not doing it to please men. Uh, you know, I make some jokes and stuff like that sometimes because that's who I am. But I am dead serious about my speaking on this channel. And my purpose is not just to present the milk, but the meat to help bring people into rest. Uh, to really have a satisfied conscience. To be able to stand confidently before the Lord, just as they are, apart from any works. Not just knowing that they're saved, but knowing that there's a smile from the one who's called them and that they can confidently rest in him and he will do it. Uh, okay, well, I gotta get going.